All right, so today we're going to continue actually solving polynomial equations. Um, yesterday, briefly, at the end of class, we looked at this idea of the I, the imaginary number. Okay, so today we're going to look at the definition of what is called complex numbers. Okay, so complex numbers look like this. Um, they have an A, which is what we call the real part, plus a bi, which is the imaginary part right here, where a and b are real numbers, and we know from yesterday that i squared equals negative 1. Okay, so this is what is called the real part, the a, and this is the imaginary part. Okay, so for example, complex numbers might look something like this, 6 plus 7i, obviously there we have the real part is the 6, the imaginary part is the 7i. We have negative 4 minus 8i, okay? We could even just have something like negative 2i, so the real part is 0. And we could even just have something like 7, that's actually a complex number because that subset is within the, all, sorry, all real numbers are a subset of the complex numbers. That's what I was about to say. Okay, so those are all examples of complex numbers. So now let's take a look at an example of how we solve with complex numbers. Okay, so just like we've been solving all the time, we're going to start by factoring. Hopefully you can see right off the bat that this is a difference of squares. You will notice that complex questions will sometimes give you a hint where they tell you instead of determining all roots where x is a real number, they will tell you that there are complex numbers involved. You can look for that hint. Um, a lot of times in textbook questions it will have that. So we're going to start by factoring. We're going to get x squared minus 4, of course, and x squared plus 4. Okay, we know we have another difference of squares, so we can take that further. We're going to get x minus 2, x plus 2, and then the x squared plus 4, we can't factor any further. We don't know any methods for that. So then we're ready to start solving. So here, of course, we get x equals 2. That's a real solution. Here we get x equals negative 2. That's another real solution. And then over here, what we know we would do is we would move the 4 over to the other side. And it becomes negative. Then, as we know, we are going to take the square root of the negative 4, and we're not going to forget the plus or minus. Okay, and now we're going to use our definition of i to actually come up with solutions in this case. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite that just so that you can see it as square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4, right, using our not radical knowledge from last year. And we know now that square root of negative 1 is actually i. So what we have here is we have plus or minus, we have an i, and we can actually take the square root of 4, which is 2. Um, and just the proper way to actually write that is 2i. Okay, so here we have four solutions. Okay, let's just be really clear on what we say here and what we report. We have four solutions, 2, negative 2, positive 2i, and negative 2i. Okay, those are four solutions, but we actually now separate our definition of solutions with x-intercepts because we actually only have two x-intercepts. These two are considered x-intercepts. We would draw them on the graph. These ones are, of course, imaginary, so we wouldn't know how to draw them on the graph. So they are solutions, but they're imaginary solutions, and you wouldn't see them on the graph. So you do need to be careful when you're answering questions now and checking out for whether it says solve or determine all the roots or whether it says find the x-intercepts. So we want to separate that definition and make sure we understand that. Okay, so let's try one more. Okay, so here we go. We're going to start, hopefully you can see, by common factoring. So um, I believe I'm going to pull out an 8x. And I'm going to be left with an x cubed minus 8. Which you can see is actually a difference of cubes. So let's keep going in our factoring. Cube root is x. Cube root is 2. Then in our trinomial, we're going to get x squared plus 2x, multiply the two terms together, square the last term. And as we know, that trinomial doesn't factor further, so we're actually ready to solve. Here we have a real solution, x equals 0. 
Here we have a real solution, x equals 2. And here we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. And we're going to get negative 2 plus or minus in the square root. We'll do b squared, 4 minus 4 times 4, so negative 12, all over 2. And we're going to work on simplifying that. So we're going to get negative 2 plus or minus. I'm going to write it as root 12 times root negative 1, all over 2. Okay, and we're going to do negative 2. Our root 12 can be written as 4 times 3, so we can take the square root of 4, so we get our 2, root 3, i, all over 2. And then hopefully you can see that this 2, this 2, and this 2, all three of those pieces are divisible by 2, so then we can actually simplify it to be negative 1 plus or minus root 3, i. And there we have our solutions. These ones over here are actually what are called complex conjugates. So we have negative 1 plus root 3i, and we have negative 1 minus root 3i. They always actually exist together. They always exist in pairs. Okay, let's just get that name down there so you have it. They're called complex conjugates. And again, let's just make sure that we understand here that we have four solutions. We have x equals 0, x equals 2, and these two solutions right here. But we actually only have two x-intercepts, right? These would be imaginary if we were being asked to graph. So we'll practice this idea a lot tomorrow and making sure that we can simplify those radicals. Thanks.